Welcome once again, and of course, uh, apologies for uh, not being able to conclude the conversation with the ASU president. We hope that we can um, bring that back sometime this week. Our next conversation is moving to Borno State, where the uh, leaders in Borno State have welcomed repentant terrorists and a program to accept them back into society. It was uh, one of the things also discussed on this platform yesterday on PLOS Politics. We're bringing that back this morning with uh, Mr. Upunabo Inko Taria. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Great to see you again. Um, now let's, you know, get I into pleasure. this. There, there is numerous, you know, views concerning this. It's actually just two uh, sides of the coin. It's either one person says um, this is completely um, mind blowing that anybody would even consider repentant terrorists and welcoming them back into society. Um, and, you know, they should instead be jailed and made to face uh, the full wrath of the law. That's one side. There's also those who say um, that, well, seeing the peculiarities with regards to Nigeria's fight against terror, you can't necessarily jail all these people. And we have to find a way to, you know, ease them back into society because not even all of them, you know, decided to be terrorists. Some of them were forced into it. Um, what is your perspective, Mr. Inkotaria? Um, well, uh to me, it is not only action, irrison, but the height of insanity to ever think that uh, these terrorists are going to or should be forgiven for the sins committed without necessarily any penalty. Because that will definitely encourage impunity. Uh, I can tell you that the issue of apostasy, that is... Um, uh, to say they have repented of their sin is just being framed by so-called sympathizers and enablers of these groups. If you recall, before now, Mr. President, before he became a president, had argued that I, if the United Delta military could be given amnesty by uh, former President uh, Yaradua, then they will do the, 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 the Boko Haram people must also be given amnesty because there will not be any justification for any discrimination. Forgetting that the two issues are not the same in any material particular. One is a terrorist group, they are bandits, the other ones are just people who have been oppressed, marginalized. The flora and fauna destroyed, sources of livelihood destroyed. They are sentenced to death on daily basis as a result of the pernicious air they yield. And so we are so much printed out of their region with little or nothing to show for it. And so despite all the cries, all their prayers to the federal government, nothing was done. And the best way to command the federal government's attention was to stop the oil exploration and exploitation. This region did not bend its spleen on other states, on other people. This, this region did not, in the of Niger Delta, now did not say, this is what you must do. This is how we want you to live. It wasn't an ethnocentric war. It was a situation where they needed to save their lives, to save their property, and also to be major beneficiaries of what is taken out of their region. So they are not the same in any way. They did not invade states, they did not invade territories, they did not go to kill people like this, this a criminal, this terrorists are doing. So they are not the same. Now that same person who advocated for amnesty for this person uh, is the same person that is in office today. What do you expect? Of course, it's going to insulate them from prosecution, it's going to insulate them from any form of uh, 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 condemnation. And that is what they are doing. So the well, issue of amnesty or the issue of imprisonment that the jails are filled, our prisons are filled, our financial centers are filled, no problem. But what I expect the federal government to do is to release all the criminals in the prison. They should go and raise them. Some of them are there for stealing goods. Some of them are there for stealing fowls. Some of them are there for stealing two twenty thousand naira. We are talking of human people that have killed, committed genocide. And you're saying just because the prisons are filled, you can. One of the IGP, IGP camps, the federal government has not been able to address the problems associated with plaguing the IGP camps. 
and you are saying you want to release these people, and you want to uh, uh, grant them amnesty, and reintegrate them into the system. No, that is madness. How are you going to reintegrate them into the system when you cannot address the, ID, the issues of the IDP camp? Then let us also not be oblivious of what happened to Aeropa. Who once attempted this? And try to, um, how, will I, how will I call, reintegrate them into the system, get them money. They went back. These are criminals, these are recidivists. They can never ever change. So what is going to happen? They will come in, and when they come in, they reintegrate, pretend to reintegrate, then get more apostles, get more people into their, into, uh, 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 recruit more people into, into their pool, and get information on how to tackle, finally, build the final onslaught on the federal government. And Mr. President cannot say he's not aware of this. He's, he's very much aware. A commando recently on the sister station who was part of um, the war against terrorists, against these bandits. So, on your sister station, what I had to say, it's been very, very bad to say that the federal government is aware because some of them are members of the, of the cabinet ESCO at the national level, some of them are in the National Assembly, some of them are in national law. This was said on your sister station. Even the so called uh, bandits. I've come on air to say that the uh, and mention, not just to say, mention those who are, who are behind them. So you can see the complicit the complicitousness of the federal government in this whole thing. And they are trying to look for a soft landing for this criminal. But All right. I can use it. All right, hold on, Mr. Let the court. Let the court. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I, I, I want to, you know, bring in, you know, um, one of the, so, so one of the conversations or part of the conversation we had yesterday with um, uh, a security expert, um, Kabir Adamu, uh, you know, he, he pointed out that, and it was from a question that I asked, you know, whose responsibility really, really should it be uh, to offer forgiveness? Is it those who are in the IDP camps who have suffered, lost family members, lost their means of livelihood, lost, you know, basically the trajectory of their lives because of the actions of these terrorists? Is it those people who are still in IDP camps or is it, the, you know, the Bernal State government and its leaders? And so he pointed out that the persons who, of course, have, you know, uh, created this conversation about accepting them and bring, welcoming them back into society and some of all, of all of that are the leaders in Borno State, traditional leaders and the likes, um, who basically, you know, we could say, speak on behalf of the people. Um, so do you think that maybe, you know, there is ways that, you know, in that state, in Borno State, that there are angles to some of these things that we may not be aware of that has made the leaders feel, well, you know, we don't have any choice and would have to accept these people. They are, you know, still our sons and cousins and fathers. Uh, I, I don't think the leaders in Borno State are the ones calling for amnesty, calling for forgiveness. Probably the governor. <laughs> and definitely uh, the traditional rulers might not want to go against the governor for fear of being dethroned. You know, most of these are governors as tyrants. They are dictators. I must commend at this point the Plateau State House of Assembly for what it is doing, for daring the government. How many state houses of assembly will do that, will have that gumption to do that? So I sincerely disagree, because these traditional rulers probably have their cousins, sisters, brothers, in-laws, nephews, and co, who have been victims of this criminal, this terrorist, that the federal government has refused to name terrorists, but will name IPO, a terrorist group. So these persons will never all. It is a governor. It is a match. The governor is only, just like Gumi, is only, it is the hand of, uh, the voice of Esau, but the hand of Jacob. The governor is only carrying out the orders of Mr. President, who is insisting on grazing for this person. That will tell you his predisposition, his inclination, his sympathy, then against the constitution of our country that best lands in the hands of government. Mr. President is insisting on grazing. Mr. President is calling for amnesty for this same character. It is not the governor speaking. The president is speaking to the governor just as he spoke to Gumi. You remember Gumi had threatened that unless amnesty is granted, this massacre will go on. Shortly after Mr. President, when he left his state, said an uh, order gave an order, led a perfect order, marching order to the military to crush this person. Gumi came out to say, no. 
Unless amnesty is granted, it's going to be an exercise in futility. They were just preparing the ground. They were flying the kite. They were just preparing the girls for this for what is going to take place now. So I don't think the leaders in Bono, what the hell are you going to explain to a man who is an IDP car? Whose hope yeah. is dashed? And and, and that's what of a brighter future should rest. It, it is How one of the things that I mentioned. Yes, that you have granted amnesty to a man that is responsible for his world. The rule of law case and the judge that is rightly subverted. Some justice must not blow peacefully. It is not allowed. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. A man with 200,000 and is languishing in jail for how long? And somebody commits a genocide and you say, look, that's an amnesty. It is madness. Um, it is madness. Mr. Mr. Inkotari. How are you going to pacify? How are you going to assuage? How are you going to assuage the victims? How are you going to assuage? We are not even talking about the dead. You cannot resurrect the dead. Those that are 90 people as a result of the death that they asked by these criminals, how do you invite them? They will still go back to the same community to live with these same human beings. You are just fulfilling the evil day. Mr. Inko Tari. There will not um, be any sanity in the society anymore. Everybody will uh, commit crime with impunity, believing that one day amnesty will be granted. And the, use, and the granting of amnesty has been abused in this country. All right, hold on. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, very, it's a very sensitive uh, discussion, you know, and. Um, you know, your concerns, you know, have, you know, have been echoed, you know, in many other places. A lot of people have said pretty much the same things, um, you know, that it, it's, it seems very unfair, you know, but, you know, there's also those who say, well, it you know, th madness. there's, there's different madness. angles to some of all of this, you know, that might make it difficult. And that's, you know, if you also look at the operation safe haven, um, the, the, um, details of operation safe haven weren't necessarily just, you know, military crushing of, you know, terrorists. There's also parts of it that, uh, you know, you know, uh, brought about, you know, um, accepting some of uh, these people who surrender, reinviting them back into society. But something else that I want to mention uh, is our criminal justice system, yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. Inkotari, I, I want you to speak on this. Our criminal justice system, for a long time, we've, we have, as Nigerians, have complained that the criminal justice system is ineffective. It takes a long time to prove anyone guilty. Court cases take years. There are people who, you know, have been arrested, even before this government, who have been arrested for terrorism, that we still cannot point out 10, 15, 20 who have been sentenced to jail or sentenced to life imprisonment or sentenced to death for terrorism. And so there is that lapse in the criminal justice system. Don't you think that's also one of the things that has been considered here? That, you know, if, if you arrest all these people, where are you going to put them? The criminal justice system takes too long, you know, to find anyone guilty. Well, before I go, before I go into that, let me, let me put this state here that even if you have to consider amnesty for these terrorists, which I'm a vast vehemently advanced. One major precondition to be the release of all those in captivity with immediate effect and to a large extent back to some level of sincerity. Not one human being should be left behind by the captors. All everybody must be released. Having said that, the issue of the criminal justice system in this country is so unfortunate. Not that we don't have the laws. We have the laws. But the implementation has always been the pain. And that is as a result of questionable characters in office. Right from the police to the judiciary. You can imagine the conflicting expert take up orders from courts of coordinate jurisdiction. And we, I commend the CJN for inviting the head of judges. Although, what will the head of uh, courts do? The head of courts will not actually do anything other than come back and issue warnings. They should have invited the judges involved because those expertly orders were procured. And I have a certain conviction that the judges would have been corrupt to have procured those things because there was no need to grant an expertly because the rest that is the subject and matter is not to be destroyed. So what is the rush in them without hearing the other side of the party? So they are corrupt, I say this. They have to be invited and disciplined. The lawyers that are also involved should also be cautioned by the NDA. I must say this. Now, you're talking about this expeditious dispensation of justice. That's exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Expeditious dispensation of justice. And that is simple. Most of these judges, take a look. Take, for example, for no state now. 
you had a case against one of these terrorists in court. Given the inclination of the governor, talking of amnesty, unless you have a judge with a very strong character, you will keep adjourning. Yes. That is if the governor has not called you already. If you have not called you already to discuss, you keep adjourning so that you don't defend Mr. Governor because he might probably might be the one responsible for your appointment as a judge, even right. when you're not qualified to be a judge. So, Mr. Inkotari, so Mr. Inkotari, let's 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 create a scenario. Let's assume that the governor himself. Yeah, that's um, what I'm trying to create now. That's what I'm trying to create now. No, so no, no but, but this is this is this is. They all have they all have the wrong court. Understand that? Not the one court. They will be tried in courts yes. in various jurisdictions, not in one court. Yes. yes. So I'm trying to tell you what my delay is. I can use the Dasuki's case as a very good example. Colonel Dasuki, where a court admitted him to be and Mr. President said no. He cannot divorce that matter from this. Mr. President said no. How can the court grant it? On national tell you where he's guilty. President has already pronounced him guilty. So in this case, the governor and president would have pronounced him innocent. And the hands of the judgment are tied. It's a convoluted situation. That's the point I'm going to make. So, the judgment, as I said, the tempest of justice must not be peaceful. The judgment must not be based on the feelings of Mr. President, the dictates of Mr. Governor, but has to be based on facts before it. But how many judges will have that gumption to dispense justice? It is justice denied. It is not because the judge, of course, we have what to call the other Ethereum party. All parties must be heard. Yes. But most times these judges employ these very stupid techniques of long adjournments. And they tell you, oh, because the lawyer, as a judge, you can say, okay, this matter will not be adjourned beyond social time. Judges do it. But when you are compromised, you give long adjournment. And that is responsible for prison conviction. Oh. Under the Administrative Opinion of Justice Act, magistrates are supposed to visit prisons in their world jurisdiction. Are they doing that now? They should be sanctioned for not doing it. Are they doing that now? In order to decontest the prison. Because most of them are working trial. Most of them are bearable offenses. What are they doing in prison? Even here, the gods give orders, admit them to bail. The security of refuge make it impossible. They try to steal the effort, the bail efforts. They try to spin it. So it's a convoluted system. And why are they doing so? They believe Mr. President or Mr. Governor is interested in that matter. If the President or Governor is not interested... All right. Um, seems we may have lost uh, Oponabo Inkotaria. Uh, the, the conversation is about Borneo State and its leaders and Governor. Um, you know, discussing and creating a space uh, to accept repentance terrorists. Yes, welcome back, um, uh, Mr. Yeah, please, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we thank can. You. Yes. So, so, so that, that's why I said it's a convoluted system. In this particular instance now, I can tell you that if there are charged, even the federal government will sort of push us indirectly by proxy providing lawyers for them, the Venezuelan government will come out openly to provide lawyers for them because he's already pleading their case. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, that that, that's why I was saying earlier that let's create a scenario where the Bono State Governor Babagana Zulum is very, very interested in justice. Um, if, if we, if, because I, I don't want you know to put this conspiracy theory out that you know he is one of those who might be supporting um, you know um, an easy way out for these terrorists. Um, we would instead just lean on to the fact that yes, we have issues with our criminal justice system that needs to be fixed. You know, and of course, the political will to completely um, squash terrorism uh, in Nigeria. Um, I, I think our final question that I will throw at you is, you know, with regards to the Nigerian government um, and those who have said that if the government was truly serious, that they would have won the war against insurgency a long time ago. Um, do you agree with this? And also, is because uh, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan was in the news a few days ago saying that they should create more spaces for uh, terrorists to repent and insurgents to repent. Do you think, you know, that seeing the numbers that have, according to news reports, come forward as repentant terrorists, do you think that that is signs that the Nigerian government is actually winning the war against insurgency? Uh I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, I think um, two things, because we are extrapolating. 
two things. It's either the Taoists have suddenly realized that it is no longer business as usual compared to when you have the Boratai and Co in office, who were compromised, obviously compromised, because even their um, successors have said the money, they cannot even account for the money, the equipment, for purchase, but purchase. And this is confirmed, corroborated that story. So they were compromised, no doubt about that. That's why a lot of us impugned the federal government's sincerity in trying to uh, overwhelm, crush these terrorists. Now, it's either though their successors have come to realize that uh, they come that their successors might not show the line of their predecessors. And so the best way is to retreat tactically in order to be launched. And that's why they are calling for this. Or they are so-called enablers. I know you want to say no, you want to correct it, play the devil's advocate like Gumi and Co. Because you are coming out to say he's speaking for them. So those are the enablers. So they are so-called enablers. I've told them, my dear, it is enough. Look at the United Delta militants. And for how long will you be in hiding? For how long will you be in the forest? Why not just come out and feign? That's why I say pain. Why not just come out and feign renunciation of whatever you're doing? So that you can move freely in the society. I strongly believe and agree with Commodore Olu Oluwami, who said this is an attempt by Buari to fullanize the country. Come out. The more we get reintegrated into the system, the more we are going to get combats. So if today only 10 persons have our sympathy, by the time we get reintegrated and launch again, we'll be extremely successful because we must have gotten another five on our side. That is, that is just the, the strategy. That is to me. That is the strategy. Not that the people are genuinely repentant. If you talk of those that, that we are coerced. Yes. Like you mentioned, those that they are coerced. Of course, that's why we say subject them to the clinical progresses of the legal law. Let them go and prove their innocence. And if we know that genuinely, and whether you are coerced or not, that you are coerced is not an alibi because you might be coerced and eventually fall in love with it. Yeah. Um, the, that's the, the truth about it. You, you know, might I, be coerced, I've also. But you're doing it unwillingly. But you're doing it unwillingly. So that's why we say. And let them be subjected to all forms of interrogation, not just come out and your, your sins are forgiven. Like Shomola said, when you move to APC, all your sins are forgiven. No. Yeah. I, I, I've also seen, uh, Ms. Engotara, I've also seen a few people say that uh, rehabilitation can be done in prison. Um, you know, you, you can also still get to face the wrath of the law. But, 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 that is, but it is no longer called prison. That is the only sense it is it should change. From prison to correctional center. That's the whole essence of rehabilitation. That's the whole essence, although it doesn't make any sense to me whether correctional center or prison doesn't change anything. But that's the whole essence. That's why they change it. That's why they change it. So you have just supported exactly what I've said. Because you have you put it so simply. So let them go to prison. Abroad, when you, people get their PhDs from prison, that is in abroad. They get because they are actually correctional centers. But the bottom line is that the crime was not committed with impunity. So that it will serve as a deterrent to others. Otherwise, tomorrow, people will get up, I will kill you. After killing you, I come out and declare I'm repentant and I'm sorry and I go scot free. Is that not mad? Is that not a prescription for anarchy? That's a prescription for anarchy. After all, they have already prescribed it. They said we should defend ourselves. But you told me to defend myself without carrying, give me a license to carry a case for the service. Is that not, is that not duplicity? It's another mockery. I mean, the, the whole system is in a mess. It's para, not just paraplegic. The system has collapsed. It's in coma. And the federal government is planned in the morass, thinking of what to do and how what step to take. But by looking for, thinking of what to do, it is worsening the problem by its actions and inactions. That is where we are today. Um, Oponabo Ingotaria, always very interested in speaking with you and hearing your perspective on issues. Truly appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for joining us and, of course, looking forward to another conversation soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, my brother. Absolutely. Where's my sister? She's not on today. Uh, no, she's not. She'll be back uh, hopefully by Thursday. Okay. All right, sir. Have a good day.
All right. Um, it has been The Breakfast. Thank you so much for staying with us all through uh, this morning. If you missed out on any of these conversations with the ASU president at first, and of course with Mr. Um, Opunabo Inkotaria, you can catch up on our social media platforms. Pretty simple, at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And of course, our YouTube channel, subscribe at Plus TV Africa or Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gie Ogbonwa. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.